I'm sure the sound people love that. So my name is Mark, and I work at uh, Sonic, and we work with AWS a fair amount. So <clears throat> I'm going to talk about Kubel and why um, I came to love it. So has anyone started an AWS EMR cluster? Yeah? You're scratching your nose. That doesn't mean... Kids. Nobody move, because I'm watching you. <laughs> so um, the AWS EMR cluster is very complex to start. There are thousands of moving parts, thousands of options. Those options could cost $10 or $1,000 an hour. You just don't know necessarily what you don't know. So it's a little complex to start. So they, I wrote a script to allow starting of clusters. Now we moved to AWS, AWS because we're like, hey, we'll put the data and we'll persist it and I won't need clusters running all the time. I can just start a cluster up, do some analysis, shut it down. Saves me money. And if I need a 20 node cluster, start a 20 node cluster. I need a five node cluster, start a five node cluster, right? So I, I need that ability. Jessica wants a cluster, she can have one. Matt wants a cluster, Matt gets one, right? So it works pretty well. The problem was it was so complex to start, right? And my favorite part was when we came back Monday morning and three clusters have been up all weekend, right? So that's no fun. Kubel solved all that for me, all right? Kubel will work on AWS, Azure, Google, and Oracle Cloud. All right, Kubel starts my cluster for me. I hit a button and it shuts it down if I haven't touched it in an hour, All right? It, 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 it allows me to create clusters for whomever, right? If you look at, look at the clusters I've got here, I've got one for Matt Cook, I got one for Jessica Lee. I use Presto sometimes, so we've created one for Presto, All right? You, get, you can create four different kinds of clusters, Spark, uh, Presto, and Hadoop. Not sure why Hadoop is different, but I don't know. But anyway, um, a lot of different things. So <clears throat> I want to start a cluster, I hit a button. Shuts it down automatically for when I don't use it. Sometimes it's frustrating coming back from lunch and your cluster's down. But all the changes I've made are stored in S3. So I don't lose any data, right? I just don't get charged for the CPU time. It's also kind of nice because you can modify the cluster. Let's take a look at Matt's cluster real quick. Let's say Matt's doing some work. He's, he's got a couple of days worth of data. He's processing it. He's got it down. He's, his analysis is pretty effective. Now we need to do six months, right? If you notice that my, my options are, are minimum and maximum slave nodes between five and 20, all right? Well, it figures it out that I need more than five and will start up to 20. But let's say 20 is not enough. Matt can go in and change that 20 to 200. All right, start it up, and now he has a very, very large cluster that need, that's, that's necessary for, his, for the work he needs, right? I can change the cluster type so I can have a bigger machine, right? So there's a lot of really cool options for managing your cluster, and you don't have to write really sophisticated EMR JSON inputs. The Kubel is also really nice because it gives you an analysis interface to, to the cluster. So let's take a look at the analyze section. So last night, I did some stuff with Presto. These are, all right, I, it's a Presto query. Sorry, does anyone know what Presto is? Presto is Facebook's Hive. It's written by Facebook, gives you a SQL interface. Uh, you define, so there's data in S3. You define what the structure of that data is as from a file perspective, and then you query the files. And, and basically, if you use Athena, AWS Athena, it's basically a Presto cluster managed underground for you. So if you're using Athena, you query SQL against your files, you get data set back, you don't even have to set up a cluster. But sometimes Athena gives you weird results. It, well, the one weird result is scale factor failure. And so basically, your query doesn't run. So. So we fix it sometimes in Kubel. <clears throat> so anyway, a bunch of different types of query types, a bunch of different options. You know, you can query Scala, R, Python, 
um, SQL, Redshift, just a whole bunch of different things. Here we're doing Presto, right? So last night, I just did a show schema. So now for all of time, right, I've got this query remembered and I could modify it if I wanted to right here and create a new result set, right? <clears throat> I mistyped how to show what all the tables are in Data Lake. So now I've got a record of that and I know that it doesn't work. I figured out the solution now, right? And that's the, those are the um, schemas within, within Data Lake, I mean the tables. So then I, I queried the table itself and if you look at the logs, you'll see that it ran and ran and ran and ran. Yeah, apparently 96% is equal to the first 50%. <clears throat> so, and I got tired of it. So I killed it, right? And that's what that little orange dot over here is, right? Red dot means failure. Little orange dot means I killed it. And then I modified the same command. This time I said limit 100. Right? Now you see how you can build your queries over time and look back on your result sets. And I think this is the really nice thing. If you're doing analysis, you know the analysis is steps. And then backward steps. And then a try this way. And then a try this way. That's the beautiful thing about this. Is all those steps are recorded for you. The results are recorded for you. What it looks like. You can go back and look at it. You can go back three steps and start over. Right. So that's, that's the nice thing about this. However, the favorite thing I like are notebooks. Does anyone use Zeppelin? These are Zeppelin notebooks. They're not unique to Kubel. In fact, if you start an AWS MR cluster, you'll get Zeppelin automatically. We found that Zeppelin was a little flaky in AWS MR. We found it very rock solid in Kubel. I don't know if they fixed that or not. You know how AWS is constantly moving. So I wanted to demo that to you. So we'll just use their example. Okay. <clears throat> so within Zeppelin, I'm sorry, that's not the right notebook. I apologize. So within Zeppelin, you have an interface to Spark. Primarily, Zeppelin is an interface to Spark. And within Spark, you can write your, your queries in Python, Scala, um, SQL, and R, right? So what we'll see here is it supports multiple languages. Oh yeah, and you can, you can write Presto and Zeppelin. Sorry, I forgot about that. Here's an example of me executing SQL. <clears throat> The nice thing about it, oh, I'm stepping away, aren't I? <laughs> Forgot about that. Uh, so basically, SQL, you begin with the percent SQL, right? And then you just kind of show tables and, and that kind of thing, and you get result sets. Now that's querying an RDD, right? So you sort of generated an RDD, or there's a table out there, and you're getting it. Um, let me show you. Also, within Spark SQL, you can um, chart it. So you can take that result set and you can simply turn it into a chart. Line chart, bar chart, different kinds of charts are supported in Zeppelin. You can um, <clears throat> write different kinds of charts, that kind of thing. And we'll take a quick look at one more. Just, did I, I didn't look at this one right now. Okay, so here we're um, actually ex executing Scala, right? By default, it's Scala. And we're just looking for the top 10 words in a data set. Pretty straightforward, right? Result set. Now what happens within a Zeppa notebook is every note builds upon the previous one. So if I generate a data set in this note, it's available in this note. If I define a class in this note, it's available to be executed in this node. So each node is a step in your analysis. 
Does that make sense? So again, similar to what we're doing with Analyze, this is really supports the concept of stepwise analysis, right? Stepping through the concept, trying different things, looking at it, taking a second step. We found this really powerful from an ETL perspective. Transforming and cleaning data, we have data that's messy. Does anyone have messy data? Yeah. Does anyone have clean data? No? I didn't think so. Do I? Yes, you, get, you have good users. Or you have no users, that's probably what you have. <laughs> oh, that's, that's it. Um, so, so we found that very valuable so we could take a step at a time. Let's transform it this way. Wait a minute, that didn't quite work. We see some issues with it. What else can we do? And from there, you can modify the step or add a new step, right? So it's, it's really powerful. And it's a really good way of saying something interesting. Um, I wanted to show you one, one final thing. They also can be aligned up in an interesting way, right? So those are three notes next to each other, trying to say something interesting, right? Amongst themselves. So the notebooks are very configurable. So Zeppelin is very powerful. And that's why I really like Kubel, right? If Jessica needs to do something and Matt needs to do something, they can have their own clusters when they need them. They're using the same data because it's S3, right? They modify data, they, they do their thing, and it's a very powerful tool for analysis. It's not a great tool for enterprise software. Do you know what I mean? And, and one of the things we did is we did a suggestive cell analysis using this guy. <clears throat> and it's very, very long. Oh, it's mostly, mostly hidden, but. And I'd have to start the cluster to see it. You don't want to see that. Um, I did some things for it. I mostly modified data and put it in a parquet format so we could query it quickly. But each one of these things are um, seriously large as to what we had to do. But it was very powerful for me to use this tool. But then I needed to turn it into enterprise software that could be executed. At that point, we kind of pulled this out and then put it into sort of Scala classes and built a whole Maven project around it. And then we could execute the Maven project with Kubel. So you can actually say, hey, start this, run this when this starts. So you can actually give it code and execute it. Um, you can also, well, but we mostly do it through Airflow. So that's what we do. All right. Any questions?